I think many of us, even on a subconscious level, care about how we come across to other people. And by extension, how introverted hermits such as myself can improve our communication skills. Hence the book featured on today's video. In this case, the book featured on today's video is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This book is known for being one of the most kind of, I guess you could say influential or popular interpersonal skills kind of self-help book out there on the internet. It's got so many reviews and it's been covered so many times. So therefore what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm not gonna cover every single part. The book is split into different principles. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the principles that I would think, I think that were the most pertinent to me. And sometimes also give my own spin on these principles. So I'll be covering about four or five principles in this video. And then what I'll do afterwards is that I will then do an overall opinion on the book and what I thought about it when I read it. The first principle I'm gonna be covering from this book is do not criticize, condemn, or complain. As humans, assuming you believe in Darwinism, we evolved to be tribal animals where our own livelihoods depended on how the tribe thought of us. These days we can just order a pizza and you know, a lot of us have a roof over our heads, for example, have some kind of food, especially in developed countries. But Back then, if the tribe didn't like you and you annoyed too many people, then no one would help help you forage for food. No one would help you build a shelter so the rain didn't fall on you and then help cause you to get hypothermia. No one would protect you if a predator was trying to kill you, etc. So if the if the tribe didn't like you, you were kind of screwed. I believe this is one of the reasons why we get social anxiety because even though there are no tigers around us trying to kill us and we don't have to forage for berries all the time, it's still ingrained in our hardware. So we care a lot when people criticize us because when people criticize us, we feel like we're gonna get booted out of the tribe and then we're literally going to die, but that's usually just not gonna happen these days, but we still feel that way. So when someone criticizes us, we feel very defensive. We feel like we have to defend our argument and we're, we're on the back foot and we're more, we're more likely to be confrontational if someone is in our face, logically. But even if someone isn't confrontational and they have good intentions, there are some people that like to poke holes in other people's arguments and plans and they like to criticize and critique things, but there's one clear distinction here. A lot of people that do this do not provide a solution. You know, I sometimes critiquing something can be good. Constructive criticism is needed in a lot of facets of life, but something that will dramatically change how someone thinks about you is what you say after that critique. Like, oh, um, I think you probably could do this better. Try doing this instead. I, I'm, I'm just quite generic, but do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? If you just criticize people without giving a solution or trying to help people, then you're gonna become unpopular very quickly. Like I've had people sometimes who might, they might have been jealous, they might have been in a bad mood, whatever the reason is, they criticize me. And I'm quite proud of myself in that moment because I've, I've went, okay, well, you know, what would you do differently? And they don't have an answer. So sometimes people don't have good intentions and just want to criticize you, but sometimes people do have good intentions, but they just don't offer a solution. So constructive criticism is needed at times, but it just depends on how you deliver it. And also some people, they get a bit negative around other people because they've had a bad day and they don't realize how it affects other people. The next principle that I wanna cover is going a step further and it's it's the principle of giving honest and sincere appreciation. So once you've stopped being a pessimist, you can then take a step further and give genuine compliments to people. Because as I've said before in the video, we care so much what people think about us. A lot of people nat on a nat naturally, they have to train themselves not to care loads about what other people because it's been ingrained into us. And a lot of people that does not come naturally, especially if they've had some kind of trauma in their life where um, they, there, were, there were major consequences if they didn't act a specific way. Or if just, just even without trauma, like it's in, our, it's in our actual brains to be hardwired to be 
in sync with other people and to be very wary of how they view us and how they act around us. So you can turn this influence around and try and be positive, which will impact people. And the key thing to keep in mind here is the honest word and the sincere word. There's no point being corny and giving loads of compliments when you don't mean it because it will get cliche and old very quickly. Like if someone wears a bloody Pikachu onesie to a black tie event, don't compliment them if you th and say they look dashing when you don't when you, when you think they look silly. But equally, if someone, you know, is wearing good shoes, for example, don't be jealous. You know, try and compliment them and be like, I like your shoes. Daniel. Sorry, I'll stop. But, you know, if you don't know that Vine, then unsubscribe from my channel right now. Well, actually, no, don't. There's like 10 of you, so please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> anyway, so the third principle from Dale, Dale Carnegie's book is to become genuinely interested in other people. With this point, everyone is different. Every, people can relate to this point on different levels. Some people might be like, yes, I definitely agree with this. Well, some people might be like, I don't care. But... A need for a lot of people is to be understood. When I'm speaking to someone and I feel like they're actually engaged in the, in the points that I'm making and they're actually listening to me. Personally, it makes me feel good. And so when I'm speaking to someone and the opposite happens and they're on the phone and they're just nodding along going, yeah, yeah, whatever, and they're not really paying attention, it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel like I'm being an inconvenience in some way or I'm just some kind of problem. Yes, talking about yourself for 10 minutes straight, you know, if by that point people start to switch off, then, you know, get the memo, it's not all about you. But I do genuinely believe that if you're sincere and, if, I don't know, in regards to this point, if you are genuinely interested in other people, like there's, there's one thing giving them a compliment, but then going another step further and then showing genuine interest in them and what they're doing. Even if it's just simple questions like, how is university going? How are your kids? How is your side project going? Whatever, whatever, because it's very contextual depending on the person's situation. But showing, I do believe that showing genuine interest in someone else and what they're doing will make them a lot more appreciative of you as a friend and it means that they will be more inclined to stay in touch with you in the future. Because I view relationships like, you know, stocks and shares or a business. Like you're not going to invest in a company, for example, that is underperforming and it is just doing terribly, etc. And like, so in relationship, you're not gonna be inclined to invest in a relationship you know, or in someone as a friend who isn't there for you, who doesn't care about your interests, you're going to be less inclined to make an effort with, with them. And a lot of people that do make an effort with people like this, they look back on their life afterwards and they think, oh, I kind of wasted my time. I wish I spent time with more people that appreciated me, whether that is friends or family, by the way. And I do feel quite strongly about this. The last point or principle I want to talk about this book and I feel like to some extent this is something that a lot of people get wrong okay and it is to show respect for other people's opinions and to not just flat out say you're wrong when you disagree with their opinion. I think partly due to the algorithms within social media and the very aggravating content on social media at the minute Everyone seems very polarized. You know, you're left or you're right. Um, you're a vegan or you love hunting, and for example, like it's very split, and that and this creates division. This creates sides, and people feel like they need to hunker down and defend their side, like kind of like tribes, as I said before. They need to defend their tribe and what they they, they are thinking and feeling. But actually, I believe that you can benefit so much more from being open-minded and instead of criticizing someone else, going, "Hmm, why do you think that?" and really, don't just listen to the words. Listen to that argument. Listen. Try and put yourself in their shoes and try to understand their perspective and where they come from and what they're trying to tell you. Because when we believe in something, we uh, adopt something called confirmation bias, which is where we only really seek out or show interest in information that confirms our previous beliefs. And this can be fairly dangerous to a certain extent because it means that we are very close-minded 
and we can't expand our way of thinking, which can have dr quite dramatic impacts on the world, especially if world leaders who have a lot of influence have this opinion or this kind of mindset. Over time, if whenever someone talks about religion or politics or even sports and they disagree with you, then you shouldn't try and just berate them because if you berate them and put them down, they're not gonna want to express themselves around you because every time they express themselves, you give them negative reinforcement and they're not gonna wanna talk to you about their innermost you know, feelings and desires and their preferences. And even if something offends you a little bit or even if you don't agree with it, try to understand them instead of just trying to criticize them. But if someone says some kind of like outlandishly racist or sexist comment, then yes, obviously in that situation go, hold on mate, nah, that's not okay. But ultimately just don't, just please try and not to be one of those heathens that just shouts over other people just because they don't vote for the same political party as you. I feel like these people are personally more immature and I mean, for me personally, I am less inclined to hang around people like that. I like hanging around people that are less judgmental, that still think and contemplate things, but they don't rush into an opinion about someone. They think, hmm, is this right? What do I think about it? Why does this person come to this conclusion? And I personally think that's a more stoic and mature way to approach, um, you know, conversations with people. Okay, so enough rambling so now to the crux of the video the overall opinion should you read this book and what is the overall opinion that i think about this book because i want to kind of be honest on this channel i feel like this book for me wasn't as engaging as a lot of other books that i've read but if i'm honest i think this is partly due to not my fault but it's because of me so uh, the stuff this book covers, I have been interested in this stuff for, for years and I've tried to implement this into my life for a long time. I remember being like 15, 16 years old when Charisma on Command first came on YouTube, for example, and I remember watching their videos and trying to apply it into my life. And so firstly, I'm very f familiar with, their, with the content that this book talks about, but also as well as that, when I looked at this kind of content, you know, a few years ago, back then it was more like, oh, I want to be cool, so therefore I read this content. But now, the person I am now, I do this because of my own relationship with my self-esteem. I do, I implement this stuff in my daily life because it's the person that I want to be. Not because of how someone thinks about me, because of how I think about myself and the kind of person and, pers and personality that I want to put out into the world and the person that I want to be. So when I read the content within this book, I personally think, okay, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm nodding my head and agreeing with it, but it's kind of like, yeah, and what's the kind of the interesting golden nugget that I haven't realized yet? Okay, so in regards to why I think the book could be better and why I wasn't engaged in this book from the books, doing if that makes sense just for two reasons i think firstly this book contains quite a lot of principles about interpersonal skills and how to deal with other people and i feel like a lot of the principles in this book are kind of repetitive and i don't know if this was intentional so it's it's more likely for you to remember them but i would rather something be explained once really well than to be repeated multiple times um over and over again but but in some ways, if something is repeated in different ways, it might strike a chord and resonate with different people. So I can appreciate that as well. But also with this book, the kind of structure that this book follows is that it will mention a, a point like, I don't know, don't criticize people. And then it will mention a point by, you know, Abraham Lincoln or King George V. And, and it, will, it will show like a quote from that person, that celebrity, that historical figure and Dale Carnegie will relate that to the point that he's making and then he'll talk about it a bit, but he does that again and again and again. And for me, it gets really repetitive. So it's kind of like, oh, King George V made this point about confidence and he talks about it. And it's kind of like, 
yes, these people are really famous and they've done really cool things, but I want to know what Dale Carnegie thinks. And there's too much leaning on the quotes of other people rather than what he thinks or his interpretation of those things. And again, the odd, I know this book was published a long time ago and that's probably why I feel this way, but some figures, some models, some, like, I don't sound like a kid, but some colors and some, just, just something that makes the book a bit more engaging. But even just the general writing, I think could be improved a little bit. Like for example, Atomic Habits that I'm going to review later on in this channel, I feel like the structure of the book is a little bit better than this. Listen, but the thing, here's the thing. This book has sold 16 million copies, apparently, probably sold more since I purchased this book. So it's clearly a really good book. I think the information in this book is absolutely amazing. And if you want to improve your interpersonal skills, then definitely read this book. But for me personally, I was already familiar with a lot of the um, content within this book. And I feel like it kind of repeats itself a bit. And I didn't like the structure of the book, but that just might be my personality. It's very clear that Dale Carnegie is a very smart individual. He's had a lot of great experiences that people can learn from if they read this book. Anyway, this video has had a lot of rambling. It's a lot longer than what I usually do. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy the video that I've done talking about how you can deal with difficult family members that I will link somewhere around here. Thank you for watching. I will see you there. Adios, amigos.